Hello, welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today I'm going to take Test Data Maker application and make the test data slightly more realistic with help of some real data or first names and last names. We have to start somewhere and I decided to use Finnish uh, names from uh, Population Information System. They are nicely available. We could uh, supplement this uh, and, and use any other name, name data available from any other country. But uh, for me, I think Finnish first names and last names is the good, good basis. At least it's better than uh, Middle Earth Hobbits that I have been using until now. So um, I have uh, loaded these, these files and uh, I'm getting these in Excel format. So our first design decision is whether I should be calling the REST API to fetch these names or whether I should be just downloading these and preloading from there. I decided to go with uh, downloading this and converting to CSV. So uh, I have uh, got, got the, these names and then I uh, save. By the way, this is an interesting data set because we can find uh, most popular uh, last name in Finland and how many people have it based on this registry. Uh, a lot of information there, but this is not GDPR sensitive, personally identifiable information, especially because I, I aim to synthesize it. So my plan is to just randomly combine these the bits to create people that don't really exist. But uh, this data is GDPR free, so I'm able to use it. It's not identifying anybody. I have already uh, downloaded these files and uh, I have uh, converted them to CSV using my open office tools and uh, i have uh, one for last names one for finnish uh, female first names and one for finnish fe uh, male first names so uh, i'm going to load this as test data for my application that's going to be the next step uh, second step is uh, to add some libraries you have heard me rant about force multipliers so never go too low level and write something unless you want to be a library developer so typically you are looking for something that gives you nice abstraction level to do a lot of things uh, with minimal coding. Let's try and do that. So uh, to do that, we need libraries. Uh, and here is my Maven POM XML file. We have already added some Spring Boot libraries, database libraries, uh, testing libraries earlier in the earlier episodes. Uh, I'm going to add two libraries. Java is an old language, so we could actually pick from many possible choices, but I ended up for this uh, video, I ended up with two libraries. So there's Apache Common CSV, and then there's Open CSV. Uh, adding these to my project uh, gives me nice access to high level abstraction to deal with CSVs. It's a, uh, well, this is Java, so it's not still <laughs> so high level. I've seen like in Python, this is much, much more minimal coding, but today we are dealing with Java and Spring Boot, so this is what we get. Let me jump back into documentation. So this OpenCSV library comes from OpenCSV SourceForge.net, and uh, there's good documentation, API documentation including, and uh, there's quick start part, that's always my favorite. So how to get started rather quickly. I especially love the even quicker start, so we are going to kind of uh, figure out this first. So I'm copying that and then we dive back into my code. Uh, I'm going to modify this load database class. Uh, load database is my database initialization right now. And as you can see, we have a lot of people from Middle Earth Hobbit names, which is awesome if I'm doing an application for Hobbits. But right now I want to test with real people. So we could get started with the CSV header uh, aware class uh, even quicker, sure. But there's some modifications I need to make anyway. First of them is how to load a file when you are within Spring Boot application. Uh, again, there's multiple ways to do this, but this one that I have here is not going to work. So uh, this one would fail because uh, we, we need to load it from class path. We might be running this as a jar file. Um, so I need to use something else. I cannot just put this one here. It would fail to work. It would actually try to look for the file in the project root, but that might be um, different every time. So 
What I want to do, I have located the CSVs in my resources folder. So I want to write code that loads them from here. And for that, uh, Spring provides you a nice utility class. So that would be uh, something called class path resource. Okay. There is uh, even higher abstraction level ways to do this, but I'm, I'm going to use this one for now. And uh, here we can put this. So technically a resources folder is part of your class path, even when you package this to a jar file. So using this abstraction class um, lets me nicely uh, create the file reader. Uh, file reader is okay, but file reader would accept uh, File reader API expects uh, to get either file or, or I think input stream. So uh, we need to get something out of these last names file. And uh, we could actually get either one. We could get um, input stream. I think it, then I would need to wrap it, uh, wrap a reader around it. But I'm going to try, try the get file right now because I know that file reader accepts a file. Let's see how that works, works for us. Okay. And then uh, from that, we are able to construct the CSV header aware reader. Sure. Uh, I need to import that one. Sure. Okay. And this would let me uh, read one row from the file. So the modeling of this API is a bit uh, kind of weird for my needs. I would need to loop this until this becomes null. And I'm not very happy with that one. I want to do something more functional. So let's see what else is available for us here. So there is a, let's remove this side as well. So uh, this reader is actually having uh, other functions as well. And this one I think is inherited, but I, I tried out things and this worked nice for me. Read all is going to read all the rows. The read map is just going to read next row. So I would need to iterate it. This one gives me all the rows at once. Okay. So what could we do with that? Well, let's uh, set a variable here. So var all rows equals this one. And uh, okay. Alexa, stop. <laughs> I have two smart home here. So uh, now, this is actually important. Uh, we have a closable that's never closed. So this is uh, my file reader. So uh, we can introduce one more new modern Java topic in older versions of Java. And still, if you Google around, you see this done a lot. You would use try, catch, finally structure, and it gets rather complicated rather fast. But what we now can do is try with resources. So let's put this one here. And uh, then we have a try block where we can deal with this file reader and file reader will now be conveniently closed. Um, I noticed that we are still getting that error, but that's probably because IDE tooling is not up to date with all the new new features. You need good tooling to, to, to kind of uh, be able to appreciate all the latest features. But this is actually something that's uh, rather useful. So try, try this. And here is my file reader. Uh, whether I fail or succeed, uh, this structure will try to auto close it because there's closable interface with it. And then uh, within this block, I can just use this resource. So I'm creating this header where reading all and then I get some rows. And uh, now we have few ways how to tackle the next step. But I think let's go a little bit functional here. So all rows stream. You don't need to do this as complicated now that I am doing. I love writing new style Java stream uh, code. So that's why I'm pushing myself always to pretty much use it. But uh, if, you, if, if this goes way above your head, well, uh, you can still do it the old way. So you can do just simple for each loop. There is a list, so you iterate the list and do something with it. But uh, I'm going to try and do something more fun. So var. Uh, test data equals, well, let, let's call this uh, last names test data. Okay, so let's grab that stream. 
and uh, then we do map. You either love or hate maps. I kind of love the maps. So uh, we have a, in this map, uh, I'm creating a function uh, as a value. We get uh, one item from the list. I know that's going to be string in this case. So uh, actually string array. So I get two columns and then uh, I want to produce a new test data item. Let's grab this one here as a kind of example. Yeah. So this is what I want to create. And uh, it's going to be last name instead of first name. And uh, here I want to put the value. Now, as I said, here is a tiny catch. So there is two columns. This uh, read all is going to return you a list of uh, string arrays. And uh, column number one, if I open the CSV, you can see column number one is always the data I'm looking for right now. So that's why I'm reading that column number one and assigning data type last name. So my items that I read from CSV become test data objects. Okay. And uh, starting to look rather good, except there is something in red. What I'm messing up here. Auto stream map new test data. Yeah, I think it should work like this. And then uh, once I have the map, I could do many other operations, but finally I'm going to collect it uh, to another list. Hmm, what's, what's going on here? Collect to, well, I know it's in collectors to list. Yeah, something like this should do. Okay, so ID was messing up again a little little bit. So after this conversion, I have read all the rows from the CSV file. I converted them to a slightly friendlier format that I have been using. You could argue about this one, but this is JPA entity. So it's ready to go to database. So then my final step would be repository. Actually, let's do it a little bit differently. At this point, I wouldn't actually need this anymore, but let's still stay here to keep this rather simple. So let's let's grab last names test data. This is where I get a slightly less functional, but just to wrap things up. So I'm going to iterate through that list and for each value, I'm going to do repository. Save the value and value should be right type at this point. OK. So I hope you were able to follow. There is many different ways to write this code, but this is the code you will see in my GitHub repository. And I wanted to show off combining a few of the modern Java features like try with resources here and then a little bit slight uh, stream handling here. Uh, your tastes might differ. Why, why did I do this unnecessary list of things here? Why did I do the conver conversion instead of directly creating and pushing it to database. Well, uh, I, I would be able to test this part separately. It's not dealing with database yet. It's just going through one list and converting it to another. So I could get some test coverage for this. I'm not going to do it today uh, due to trying to keep this compact, but that would be my main uh, excuse for this extra step. Okay. Um, I think what remains to be done here is to figure out if this works. If it works, I'm able to drop these last names. And then I will probably do offline one final thing, which is to replace the first names as well and refactor uh, this functionality to a method. But I think you already got the point. So let's just see if I messed up anything. Maven Spring Boot Run. It's highly possible that I messed up something. Uh, tends to happen when I try to code and talk at the same time. Um, let's see, let's see. Almost there, but we did get one uh, one problem. Class path, your file, CSV. Ah, okay, well, <laughs> that's my bad. Uh, should it be last names, CSV? So classical copy-paste error. Let's run this again. The good news is that my application gives me clear error message when I when I mess up. So that's always good. So uh, 
because I have that uh, logging in preloading step, we are able to immediately see that it's working. Now that we have a little bit more people in the database uh, to get started, as, as I mentioned, I will later come back here and uh, clean this up a little bit. So we'll make a reusable function out of this because only thing missing is which file I load and uh, to which uh, kind of field I put the results. And then uh, uh, after that, I will replace also the first names uh, similarly. So at that point, we are starting to have pretty nice setup. I will show you it. I will edit it in this video as well. So you see the end result. Here is uh, the loader that we were working on. So in my final result, I have a refactored the function that will read CSV file. Um, it's possible to give the file name and uh, desired data type, and it will return list of test data. So that changes the main loading part to be really easy. We just load the data uh, for each of the values uh, we preload it to database. Now, this is not optimal way to do things yet. Uh, optimal would be to use some kind of batch. So the problem is that uh, this takes some time, as you will see. Um, let's uh, run this like this. So now I'm uh, doing a separate transaction and commit for each entry. And uh, I do get away with that uh, right now. It's a few seconds of time. Uh, but it's kind of a waste, and if, if my data would uh, enlarge, it would be good to get rid of this. So if you want to see an episode about Spring JPA batch operations, let me know in the comment section, and perhaps we can fix this. Anyways, now that we have some data, um, I still have my trusty old uh, uh, API tester. So if I run my API test, I haven't changed it at all. It's the same test uh, as when we started. Uh, now we can see really uh, more interesting uh, people names here. So there's first name Artemi, last name Uli Tolonen, and email correspondingly. Then we have Bengt Olof, Unila, etc. Leonid Axola. So interesting names from the official data, fully th synthesized people uh, to be used for testing any application and uh, i'm thinking perhaps adding adding some more information like a uh, country of residence would allow me to have uh, mix and match separate data sets from all over the world but this is now a data set based on finnish names did all this uh, make a lot of sense uh, possibly not i'm using a little bit heavy artillery for rather simple tasks. But as I, as I mentioned, I actually expect this application to grow because there's all kinds of test data I would like to have. For example, should we have different uh, sets of uh, names for different nationalities so we could mix and match? Should we keep uh, men and uh, women names separate? Should we have those separ separately handled? Perhaps right now I'm just pooling all together. So there's many ways I could expand and therefore I, I expect that uh, database might come handy for me. Right now it's a little bit stupid database because it's in memory. It always keeps on forgetting whatever I do, but a uh, plan would be of course to replace that with something real for the, for the deployment. So uh, thanks for watching this episode. See you later. Bye bye.